Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad to hear this Friday morning. I know a lot of y'all glad it's Friday. And we'll get started with our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Road and Highway 77. Now, today is, is calling for some thunderstorms, about a 60 or 70% chance, according to where you live. And it's going on to be a high of 84 degrees and a low of 73. So, we don't, you know, we still haven't had a lot of July heat. It's still been cool compared to, this will be one of the coolest Julys we've had on record now when everything's said and done. Water temperature is going up a degree. It's up at about 82 degrees right now. Now, the marine forecast is west-southwest at Really not going to be real windy. They're calling for like four to five miles, which is not bad. Four to five at, at west southwest. The river readings. Take a look at the river readings. Blountstown uh, uh, reading of the Apalachicola is dropping on out, and it's, it's getting, but there's still high water. But I'm telling you, we're going to talk about it two or three times on the show today. The advantages of having a small boat to get up in some of those sloughs, and how good fishing that is. Okay, but it's reading this morning at 14.6. Talk to Hatchet at Caraville. We're talking about it's dropping out a lot faster. It's got a reading this morning at at uh, uh, Caraville at 12.1, but it's it's uh, uh, real muddy and uh, moving pretty swift there. The chalk to hatch at, at uh, Caraville. Okay, now let's take a look at our, our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. Their motto is "We're Caring Counts." And looking at today's tides, we're looking at a high tide at 11.39. And a low tide at 8.51. We're looking on July the 12th, that Friday. Not, not a lot of strong tides today or tomorrow, and especially on Monday of next week. But next weekend, we're looking forward to some really strong tidal flow. Okay? Uh, just got off the phone every Friday. I'd like to give a, a shout-out to Sea Quarters Marina. And I just got on the phone with Miller. And Miller's going to be coming up on the show pretty soon. They have a big tournament coming up. Remember, go and mark your calendar now, that first weekend in August. That big uh, Sea Quarters Marina uh Kingfish Tournament. He was telling me the Kings are tearing it up down there. We'll talk more about that on the show later on. But Sea Quarters Marina down in Caravel. All right, let's take this break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. to say a special good morning. Adam Mercer up there in Fountain ran into his sweet wife over there giving me a chicken biscuit at uh, Chick-fil-A. We had the best talk. And uh, Adam, I'm glad you watch the show. She said you watch it all the time. And uh, Appreciate it, and you got a, a sweet family there, and a good son and a, and a wife and, a, and kids, okay? So appreciate you watching the show. All right, I've been talking about these scallops. Now, I was able, uh, my vacation always the first week, a week and a half of, of July, and I know you say I'm off a lot, but I'm, I'm really not. But when I really sort of just close everything down, and I want to thank Bill Allen for covering some for me. But anyway, my vacation's over, and I picked a really good, good time this year to, uh, the weather was just uh, uh, was really bad as far as doing outdoor activities. Of course, we always have a great time doing a lot of fun things with the family and friends and all, but I had some great cookout on July 4th and all kind of good things. But anyway, we always do scalloping, and uh, I, 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 put, uh, I took some pictures now. We haven't gotten a lot of scallops, mainly because not they're not out there, but it's too little. I wanted to, I put this on Facebook, got a lot of feedback, these pictures here. And a lot of people feel the same way we do. I think a lot of locals and all. I'm gonna, I've got a series of pictures I want to show you, and uh, it, it's going to sort of depict on what we're talking about, small scallops. Okay, now, take a look at this first picture right here. This is, this is the size of about 90% of the scallops in St. Joe Bay as we speak. There's a quarter right there, and you can see the size of them, okay? They're just not, uh, okay? Now, the next slide is going to show you the one on the far left, there are some out there. That's this year's. That's this year's crop. That's a big scallop for this year, and that's a keep. That's a keeper there, uh, and it's edible. Okay, but I, I'm, I'm going to series now. And then I found a couple of, of last years. We, we really call them old, old mossy backs because you can actually see the moss on them on that one far left. That's a last year's uh, uh, scallop. And it's been there all year. And the grass started growing on them. Beautiful, big size meat in it. Well, I'm gonna open these up in a, in a minute, okay? And then I found one really. I uh, found a couple big ones. Look at the grass growing out uh, off of off the shell there. Fascinating. But look at now. Look at the size of that quarter, and you see the size of that scallop. But these are few and far between, okay? So now I laid them down in order. 
you can see what you can see what the peanut we'll call those those two on the right those are peanuts and that's where like I say 90% of them are and anything those other three over there left you are certainly gonna keep those you just not finding a lot of them right now okay now let me go uh, uh, let me go uh, uh, hold on a minute I'm gonna change I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna open this scallop up and show you exactly what I'm talking about all right now check this out right here I open them up and you're gonna see the size of this meat right here all right the same scallops in the same order we're talking about all right look at the size of the meat now, to make it even more impressive, I really, I, I'm going to send this set of uh, pictures down to the Florida Wildlife Research Institute and the FWC. Check this the next one, this last one out right here. Now, this is a close-up shot of that real big one and real small one. And I was going to say, this, this, is, uh, this picture right here, this, this really depicts exactly what we're talking about. We're, we're looking at, I, I started to say that big one is about three times bigger. It may be even four times bigger than that small one. So you can, but it's definitely three to four times bigger than that small piece of, uh, of meat right there. And uh, the one in the middle now is a large scallop this year, or, or the two large scallops from last year. So, but if you'll let, if we'll all let these scallops, uh, if we'll all let these scallops uh, grow a couple more weeks, they grow fast. They only have a year life cycle. They grow real fast, and uh, they're, they're fascinating to watch them, uh, and they're out there. But those little peanuts, we'll let them go. I know a lot, of, most of the locals, I talked to a lot of people. Uh, this past week and a half at the boat landings in different places and out on the water and we're all seeing the same thing and we all feel the same way and I've seen uh, I, I saw one couple or talk to them they picked up 300 scallops and they released 295 and they were a local couple from St. Joe we'll talk about that family a little bit later but uh, that's just the way it is right now now uh, there's a couple other things before we take this break uh, we mentioned this the other day this, let's jump into hunter safety. Uh, we mentioned it when Stan was on. There's one over in Jackson County, and it's going to be on, on Saturday, July 27th. It's a range portion. It'll be at Chipola uh, Community College out there. They have an actual shooting range there, and it's going to be right there at Chipola. And also, but you have to take your, you know, take the, all the online course before you get there, and have to have a little certificate that you have completed it. Now, there's also one. This is in Leon County, and uh, well, our new viewers, some of them are over in Leon County, but all you folks over there in Liberty County and uh, Franklin County, the, in the eastern end of the viewing area, you might be closer for you to go to Tallahassee, and this is going to be uh, the same kind of course. Uh, it will be actually, it's going to be uh, July uh, 16th, 18th, 26th. This is going to be a classroom. If you want to, if you'd rather do the classroom, it'll be July 16th, 18th, uh, 23rd, and 25th, and the range portion is on the 27th over in Leon County. And uh, that would be, uh, okay, that would be coming about the same weekend, okay? So that's the two hunter safety courses, all right? Uh, now, well, let's go ahead and take our break now. i got a lot more pictures to show you. I think you'll enjoy some of these. I'm going to say another, another good morning to Mike Price and family. Lori viewers like the show. I appreciate you watching the show, Mike Price. Check out some of these pictures. Now, i got some more running behind on pictures. I've, I've got a lot of them sent to me. This is all this rain we've had in these sandhill ponds. Now, it's pushed, uh, pushed the water up at the same time. It's pushed some of these snakes up. And uh, this is a paint pond up there in Sand Hills. Uh, all, I counted 14 snakes on this dock here. 14 snakes. Uh, and what it has is high water. And they're looking for something, something to get out and get dry on. And they found this dock. Now, I don't think I'd want to do any dock fishing that uh, Saturday morning. Off, off this dock right here. Okay, got some more pictures. Got some kingfish. Nice. Uh, some kings are being caught. They, uh, 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 especially down around Carabel. All right, grouper and all. Nice, nice group. Jason Singer, nice grouper here. Uh, got a, got this saying right here. If anyone ever, this is funny. If anyone tells you your dreams are silly, remember there's some millionaire walking around who invented a pool noodle. So you always keep on dreaming. I always tell my students, never give up and keep on dreaming. So, all right, now, Martin Lake. Here's a mess of fish out of Martin Lake. Uh, this is uh, during that rain, folks. They were just turning on. Uh, folks got some time to go fish uh, Martin Lake. I don't know if I'd uh, eat a lot of those Martin Lake fish. All right. Uh, bee liners. Good catch of bee liners. Uh, I said, it's got a watermelon. You can tell it's around July 4th. Got a watermelon and bee liners. Yeah, that's about as good as it's going to get. Justin Leake's in this picture. This is not down in Boca Grande. This is right out here. Uh, Justin had caught, he, on that trip, he, he hooked six tarpon and brought two to the boat. And on tarpon fishing, this is basically all you want to do. You just want to be able to get that, uh, 
that big fish up next to the uh, boat, take a picture of them and release them. Uh, they're, they're definitely not edible and you want to release them and try to catch them again. So tarpon fishing is uh, sort of a secret industry around here, but there's a lot of tarpon around here in the Panhandle, I, here in St. Joe Bay. Uh, Tom Gurley sent a, this is a black and white photo of the, of the Cape St. George Lighthouse. Great picture there, Tom. Tom Gurley. Okay, God is everywhere, so pray anywhere. I certainly try to do that. Sometimes more than I should, not enough that I need to do more sometimes. Check this out. Blake Sutherland. Now, folks, it might have been raining, the water dark and tea colored, but you can still catch some nice fish out in the bay if you just get out there and get after them. I've had some several good catches brought in here. Okay, Blake Sutherland. You're not going to believe this. This is Travis Tritt, and guess where he is? At Tarpon Dock Seafood. On the left is Clay Davis, one of my former students. Clay works there, been working there a good while, and Clay's engaged now. And Travis Tritt walked in and said he wanted some fresh seafood, and he heard that was a place to go. And he was kind enough to uh, stop and take some pictures. So if Travis Tritt uh, can go to Tarpon Dock Seafood, that's quite a compliment there to the company right there. Ryan Revere. Sent these in a good story behind these fish. They caught them uh, this uh, this week. Ron Revere, the principal of Vernon High School, his dad's Bud Revere. He's a retired principal from Haney, and and they they like to fish together. And, and uh, here's Bud right here. Check this out. Now Bud didn't want to. Uh, he didn't know much about. It. He didn't call it a Facebook. I think he called it a fat book. He didn't understand the technology. He got that education about the right time before all this technology came in. But he just wanted to make sure that we get these pic these pictures right here. He wanted to make sure Winston Chester got the pictures, even if he had to put it on Fat Book. So we got it, Bud. And that's some two twenty. That's a couple twenty seven inch uh, redfish right there. That is some good redfish. And come out of West Bay, okay. Next picture. Okay, I'm gonna read. <laughs> you know, the other, uh, other day I showed a picture of a, a car coming down two thirty one, and it was all loaded up uh, with the ice chest and everything, headed to Panama City Beach. Well, I got, this, I got this email from Marcus Parrish, and Marcus is the head coach. I recently saw that picture of, a, of visitors coming down, and I, I, know, uh, I understand how they feel. He went on saying, uh, this is a picture of me and my friends we had. We were headed up to Ohio to go uh, on our hunting trip last January. I thought we may get a kick out of this, so just about everyone we passed uh, had this uh, <laughs> deer, in, deer in the headlight looks when they, when they saw the load we were hauling. We made it all the way up there and back safe and sound, but I must admit, I was on pins and, and needles the entire round, <laughs> entire round trip. Have a great day and keep up the good work uh, you're doing with the show, Marcus Parrish. But that's funny. We, we head up that, uh, that way to Ohio to go hunting, and they, they come from Ohio down here with the, to the beach with the same load. Okay? All right. That takes care of a lot of our pictures and all. I want to uh, give you a quick experience now. I've got a... Uh, this right here, I'm not going to read the whole thing right here. I pulled it off the uh, internet last night. They had a boating accident <coughs> down at Econ, where the Econ Fine, uh, down around Perry, Taylor County, had a big bend. Big bend is next to the Panhandle. A boat had gone out, and a, a, a smaller boat was taken on rough seas, another uh, right at the mouth of the river. Another boat came up to rescue it, and that boat started taking on water. When FWC came in from both sides, they had a boat on each side, and, and, and rescued all the swimmers and no fatalities and some minor injuries, but uh, the, the guys were clinging to the boat, which was a smart thing to do, and they got rescued and all. So, you know, coming to the aid of another, you know, that, that uh, boat B was coming to boat A but uh, to help out, but it got swamped when it got turned in and got, got in a trough. And I, I was reading the details on it, but a good thing happened to, to Gail and I this, this week. Uh, a bad thing happened, and then a good thing happened. Uh, we were out scalloping uh, Wednesday afternoon, and my boat, the motor hadn't been running good. I just said, it just hadn't been running good, and lo and behold, it cut off on me, and we were on. I uh, was put in at a state park and going all the way down over there, close to Press Nails, toward Conks Island on the back side of Black's Island. It cut off on me, and 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 it just happened to be there's a couple right coming up to us, and we were, we're obviously we're going to talk about a scholar because none of us could could uh, could find any, and it was it was uh, uh, they they had a it was David and Louise Musselwhite from St. Joe. They're one that found a 300 scholar and threw back 295. And I, he asked me how I was doing. I said, well, my motor just cut off. He said, don't worry about it. We'll tow you in. I said, well, I'm way off. You ain't got to do that. But he insisted. And so we ended up scalloping another 45 minutes and got back together. He hooked me up and towed us from that area all the way back 
to the boat ramp at, at St. Joe State Park. And that, that was, uh, I want to just personally thank uh, David and Louise Musselwhite for their, not only generosity, but just the friendliness they did it with and just a great attitude. And, you know, I always tell at the end of each show every day, I said, do something good for somebody today. And I really mean that. Well, the Musselwhite family down in St. Joe really did something good for Gail and I Wednesday afternoon. Uh, uh, it was uh, it was aggravating. I don't usually have that kind of trouble with my boats and all, but it just cut off. I'm, I'm afraid I got some bad fuel or something. And I was completely unexpected when, when it happened because, uh, like I say, it's a good motor and everything. But uh, uh, they go to the First Baptist Church in, in St. Joe. I know some of you folks at First Baptist Church in St. Joe watch this show. So Sunday morning, you pat them on the back and tell them thanks for doing a good deed for uh, at one time a total stranger, but uh, we also bought, we, uh, he played ball way back in the day at St. Joe, and, and uh, it was just, when I had, I'd, I'd seen him at the First Baptist Church cookout, and they told me they recognized my voice before they got up to the boat, so I, I don't know uh, if, that, if that's funny or what, but uh, I do appreciate it, and, and folks, if you can uh, do a good deed like that, especially out in the water like that, it, it'll be much appreciated. So again, uh, thank you all very much, and uh, we appreciate that. All right, now, let's get ready to draw Talking about doing something good and talking about seafood. Let's get ready to draw for our first will be $20, $20 worth of fish or, or scallops or oysters, whatever you want for talking about seafood. Now you can enter for you new viewers. Uh, just you know, send me, all you gotta do is send me your name and, and enter and enter uh, here, okay? And the winner of $20 is gonna be John Newman up here in Lynn Haven. All right, John, that's a $20 gift ticket. Now this should be for the red snapper. And folks, they're catching, still catching red snapper. I've got some good reports. And the winner of red snapper is from Apalachicola, Johnny Lee Chambers. So uh, let me know when you're coming up this way. I'll call them. You don't have got to make a special trip, but when you're coming up this way, call me ahead of time, and I will tell them you're coming like next Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever. All right? So congratulations to you two folks there in Lynn Haven and Apalachicola. All right, we'll take our final break and get ready for our famous Friday fishing forecast. <laughs> Welcome back and welcome to the Tarpon Rock Seafood Famous Friday Fishing Forecast. And you think we know all this bad weather, we're not catching the fish. But I'm telling you, folks out there catching fish. And overall, it's not as good as it normally would be. But the water temperature has cooled down. It's gotten muddy where the, where the, where the big rivers feed into the base system. That's, that's the biggest problem right there. But some other places, and we'll take, for instance, Carabelle. See, Carabelle doesn't have a big river feeding into it. And, and I just got off the phone right at the beginning of the show with Millard. And he was telling me they're tearing it up down there. It's been an outstanding week of fishing, and they've been catching a lot of kings. I said, well, you, uh, the water's not muddy. He said, it's not bad down here. And I'm gonna, I, let's zoom on here to Carabelle. And I can show you, we got this small river right in there, uh, the, the Carabelle River. And it just don't have, it's coming out of Tate's Hill, and a lot of that water is filtered anyway. And it's sort of muddy, but right there at the mouth. But coming on out here, they're catching a lot of kings, and they're limiting out on grouper as they're coming offshore. So you can see the, the bay system, it, it opens up, it's not sort of enclosed. It can go on either side. The water can go on either side of here and flow on out. And so it's sort of open up in here. So the king fishing and has been excellent over in there. Now let's move on up here to Apalachicola. Now, now on the other hand, Apalachicola has, has been muddy, okay? There's just no other way to talk about it. It has been really muddy and, and the fishing has not really been outstanding, although there have been some tarpon caught uh, around, uh, like the same way I said last week, uh, around uh, uh, the village over the retirement village over the Lenark village. The, uh, the biggest bite, though, has actually been flounder. Talked to some people at a boat landing. They had a mess of flounder. I said, man, where'd y'all get those? And they were telling me uh, they were getting them uh, right where finding some clear pockets of water and uh, actually fishing right on the edge of where that mud and clear water is. So keep that in mind if you're flounder fishing. Uh, now, here in the biggest thing, uh, the top water fishing in St. Joe, I tried some top water fishing in St. Joe Bay, just flat out can't do it. The, the grass, and it's, it's not really the storm that's called that. This time of year, that grass releases from the bottom. It's just, you know, they're like leaves falling off a tree. That grass, and St. Joe has so much grass in the bottom of the bay, it sort of comes up up, and just one, one, uh, one piece at a time will come up to the top of water and just start floating, and they just start bunching up. It just kills your top water fishing. I tried, <clears throat> I tried several areas, and if you want to go up in the head of the bay, it's not quite as bad. If you want to go up there, and I'll show you uh, basically if it, where the, it's not quite as bad. If you want to fish up here on the backside of Black's Island, okay? Check this out 
all right? <clears throat> it's not, you can put your kayak in here, and it's not as bad as whole area in here, all right? Uh, but as it flows out, it just starts accumulating. If you're going down to the uh, other end of the bay, you're just going to have a lot of, a lot of grass. So St. Joe Bay is not, is not, has not been good fishing this week. I've tried it. i tried two or three times. I've tried also some swim baits. You know, I've tried to get up under the water about this far, and it's still, it's still catching some of, the, some of the grass. So it hadn't been, uh, hadn't been a productive week in St. Joe Bay. And uh, that, I've been down there, so I know. Uh, freshwater, real quick, let's take a look at freshwater. Freshwater, the best thing now is to have a small boat. If you have got a small boat, most of you, a lot of y'all up there around Wee Wall and, and uh, over on the Chattahatchee River have these small river boats, and you can just get up there in that backwater and get up there in those sloughs because now it's falling out, and where, where a slough comes out and then starts at a neck right there and then flows back out, right there at that neck of a slough, I can promise you there's be some good fishing because what has happened, that water has pushed those fish up in there, and they've came out, they've gorged themselves. The bass, the brim, and the catfish have come out and fished, and, and the fish have gotten up in those sloughs, and now they're going to start receding, and, and y'all know where you can ambush them. Uh, you, you old timers know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? So now let's go over to uh, Freshwater's Action here in Panama City. Good catches of redfish in West Bay. Uh, you saw the pictures of the Revere family. Bud, uh, Bud caught some nice ones over there, and also uh, over there around uh, Deepwater Point are catching some Spanish. I've uh, got some reporters in Spanish being caught at Deepwater Point. Choctahatchee Bay, uh, it's been muddy over there, uh, but cast netters. The mud is still jumping now. They're going to jump in clean water or, or dirty water. They're going to be jumping. So the cast netters are doing a good job over in Choctahatchee Bay. All right? Now, that's, that's your overall uh, overall forecast. A lot more details. You can go on the website and look it up, and, and I've got more details there. Also, I have your fishing times if you want, uh, if you want to go, and I, I certainly believe in those fishing times. So overall, considering the weather we've had this past, you know, we've had anywhere from 15 to 22 inches of rain this past seven or eight days. It's been phenomenal. So uh it's overall hasn't been bad. That's going to have to wrap it up. Folks, thank you all for watching Panhound Outdoors this week. We appreciate your viewership. You do something good for somebody today, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.